Ave. Welcome to the Alpha Male Podcast. That was a Roman greeting. As today, as today we'll be talking about Rome, Roman things. Specifically, Roman weapons. Pretty cool manly topic, I think. So stay tuned to the Alpha Male Podcast. I don't know if you're man enough to become a patron and support this podcast, but if you think you are, check out goodshepherdtraining.com. With that, I'm going to plug in the bio, and by God's grace, we'll get into the main topic. Who am I? A question we should all ask ourselves. I am, first and foremost, a servant of God, made in his very own image, a follower of Jesus Christ. A simple man called by God to the Great Commission to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Next, a little bit about my background and what God has allowed me to do and blessed me to do in life. Grew up what most would consider very poor in the backwoods of the southeastern and mid-Atlantic United States. Hunting and fishing. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. So a decorated Marine Corps combat veteran. Infantry assaultman. After the combat tours, I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in the U.S. Army both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also a veteran of law enforcement. I served with LAPD. I was a sworn peace officer, a cop for LAPD. I worked regular patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. One of those more specialized assignments was warrant service, fugitive recovery. Also had some other law enforcement roles. I am an FBI certified firearms instructor and been certified by another three-letter government agency in a lot of firearms and training things. I've also been a private contractor, worked in the private sector pertaining to tactics and gunfighting and Protecting America from enemies foreign and domestic. I served as the commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters in a large metropolitan area. That was our primary mission, to stop active shooters, which sadly are a thing in America today. I've also been blessed to do quite a bit of competition shooting. Started my first formal competitions even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. I had won more shooting competitions than I can remember. I have competed in all manner of disciplines in shooting. I've been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion, West Coast regional champion. Like I said, been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. Mentioned hunting, I've hunted to put meat on the table starting when I was a child. I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide, hunting and slaying all manner of beast. And I don't apologize for that. Humbled to be the host of three podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, Alpha Male Podcast, and Gunfighter Life. Obviously, as things not mentioned, I've been blessed to do many other things. But, again, first and foremost, I'm a servant. A servant of God, a believer and follower of the Bible, the Word, Jesus Christ. And I don't apologize for that. With that, let's transition into today's topic. Now, where to begin in today's episode? We're going to be talking about Roman weapons. There will be some history in this, but this is not a pure history podcast. If you like that kind of stuff, which I certainly do, you might want to check out Hardcore History. There's quite a bit there on the Romans and the Roman period. As 
Most podcasts do this started out with a single thought about one thing, one very specific weapon, and how that applied to ancient weapons. And I kind of thought about that throughout the day and expanded on that. By the grace of God, I think here we are with a full episode. Let me start out with some things around weapons and weapons in Roman society. Now I tried to do some research on this before the day's topic. Sadly, it seems that a lot of people in academia are on one political side, and I don't want to get into that. That just is what it is. It makes unbiased research fairly hard, and I don't know that we should necessarily apply principles of Rome and the Roman Republic and the Roman Empire, because you have to remember, Rome is not like just one set thing. It was around for, well, depending on, there's a lot of debate on how you justify that. Is it just the... Roman Republic or the Roman Republican Empire or the inclusion of the Eastern Roman Empire or even the Holy Roman Empire, you know, you could maybe argue that some vestige of that is still around today. However, I think we'll mostly talk about the Roman, early Roman Empire, the Roman Republic, those periods. And I, again, I'm cautious to apply their principles and governance to today. Obviously, our Western culture and a lot of our governing model, if you will, is predicated on that Greek and then later Roman system that's well outside the scope of today's thing. We obviously have things like representatives and republics in today's government, but we did away with slavery and we don't throw people to lions. We don't have people fight in front of us for sport to the death. So let's be careful about how we apply these. But when I looked at Romans being armed, obviously the Roman army was very well armed. I tried to do some research on Roman citizenry being armed. And a lot of that, first things that come up, you see, again, a lot of people I assume, I don't know them personally, are on the other side of a political aisle and have an agenda. The Roman citizens couldn't be armed, but I dove into that and found out that what they were quoting was a law that people inside the city of Rome were not allowed to carry weapons, even the military. I do believe we're not allowed to carry weapons. It was considered like a set-apart place that was for political and religious purposes where no fighting was to take place. It's like, much like today, generally people can't carry weapons into a courthouse. I also found that, especially early in the Roman Republic, citizens must have had to have been armed and probably required men to be armed. If not required, then highly encouraged because their early armies were formed by armed citizens. And the type of soldier you were in the Roman army was predicated on what kind of weapons you could provide for yourself. These were citizens that were doing a portion of their life and wealth to serve the Roman society via being a soldier. And I think there's something great in that. I don't believe it was until later in the Roman Empire where that was like its own separate thing. Like you had citizens and then you had soldiers who were also citizens. But I think in the beginning, from what I understand, soldiers were like farmers and citizens and merchants that armed themselves and stood up for the empire. And I think there's something awesome in that. Do your own research. I am by no means expert in this. I do not have a master's degree in ancient Roman studies. I didn't even stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Anyway, from that research that I've done, that's how I understand it. And as the government got bigger and seemingly more oppressive, authoritarian, they started to restrict the rights of citizens, starting with slaves and then maybe later other citizens to be armed. And there's some pretty clear linear things between that and today but I'm going to leave that because that's not the object of today's thing and I don't want to get political you are bombarded likely if you were in America or Europe or most other places daily with political stuff and I don't want to turn this podcast into that but I think something that almost all men enjoy is discussion of weapons at least most alpha males discussion of weapons so let's talk about some weapons right The Roman Gladius. Kind of what we think of as the quintessential Roman weapon. Like if I just said Roman weapon, most of you that know 
anything about history and weapons would think of the gladius. The gladii, I believe, is the plural of gladius, gladii. You would probably picture that in your head. A Roman soldier with his gladius, his square shield, or some iteration thereof. Right, This was the quintessential foot soldier, infantryman's weapon of war. It was the small arm, the backbone of the small arm of the infantry of the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire. An awesome weapon. So what is that analogous to today? My first thought was a shotgun, 12 gauge. Now stay with me. Today in America... We have pretty distinct lines. Those lines are getting blurrier with the militarization militarization of police. But especially in days of yore and traditionally, there has been a very clear distinction in America between military and law enforcement. They have very different roles. Sometimes with the National Guard, you can get some peacekeeping missions and stuff like that. But hear me out on this. That's pretty unique to our culture. A lot of other places, even European countries, they don't have that clear of a distinction between military and police because we have posse commentatus. There's a pretty distinct line on what the military can and can't do on American soil here in the U.S. Again, outside the scope of today's topic, but it is relevant to what we're about to talk about. In the Roman era, as I understand it, and there's a lot of different parts of the Roman era, but just in Rome... The army was used to conquer and go out and defeat and smash enemies and break things and conquer peoples and lands, right? That There's no disputing that. The Roman military and soldier might often have been called on to restore order or keep order in a Roman province. Much like we would think of today as a NATO mission or a peacekeeping mission or even a law enforcement mission. Now, when I think of main tool, and this is transitioned, but... When I was a police officer, LAPD, and still today, and especially in days of yore, the long arm of the law enforcement era was the Remington 870 or the Mossberg 500. It was a shotgun. One thing that made the Roman Gladius great was they fought a lot of times in close combat, close in fighting tactics, what we might think of today as CQB. If they were in a pretty remote place, they often fought close in and up close. That's how they like to fight. And when I think of up close combat, the the sumum talum, the supreme weapon of that, in my mind, is a shotgun. So that's the first place I went. And then I kind of rethought that throughout the day. And I thought perhaps the Roman gladius is more analogous to an AR-15, at least here in our culture, maybe the AK-47 in other cultures. But the Roman gladius was the primary infantry weapon of the Roman army army the primary weapon of our military and has been for a long time and until it gets replaced by the m5 which is you could argue a variant of this but the ar-15 the m16 started out as a civilian design weapon adopted by the military it has become the go-to infantryman's weapon the backbone of the small arms infantry marine corps army it's what I had in my hands in the sands of Iraq. Pretty analogous to the Romans conquering lands, introducing a foreign people to the freedom of a republic through bloodshed. You know, wh- Whatever you want to... Anyway, the point of that is the backbone. Today is a lightweight, moderate weight assault rifle. AR-15, again in other cultures, and AK-47. So maybe that is the Roman gladius of the day. The primary thing is the Roman military. I don't know throughout history how much the percentage of them was conquering new lands and fighting wars versus peacekeeping. Obviously that varied greatly from era to era. We have to remember that the Roman Republican Empire lasted maybe a thousand years and quite longer if you include the Eastern Roman Empire, Constantinople, and those things. But that's a long time, much, much, much longer we've been around as America. And there's going to be great variation in what they did. Think of them as an army, which they were perhaps the greatest army of all time, as far as conquering lands and people go. If we consider the backbone of their infantry, the gladius, then that today, right, if we're doing this, 
would be the AR-15 or the AK-47. The Roman Gladius, if you don't know, is a Roman short sword for thrusting. You can also slash with it. Designed to be used, if preferably, in ranks, in tight ranks with shields. And tactics, again, varied from era to era. But that's basically a bunch of men in line with shields with short thrusting swords. Quelling rebellions. Slaughtering what they considered savages or uncivilized peoples. Restoring order. Whatever. The Roman Gladius, the Roman short sword, iconic, quintessential. So I think where I stand on this is I'm not really sure. Could be the shotgun, could be the AR-15, but some version of a long gun for the every man. Probably the AR-15 or AK-47 for today. Next, an often overlooked but very vital from what I understand to the Roman military might, the pilum. And there was a lot of different versions of spears and lances. But the Roman pilum was a pretty unique spear. The long iron shaft. It was used for range. It was also in different roles. It was a, at least for the warfare of the time, an intermediate. Let's call it that. Because you had your arcus, your bows, your archery, your lances for a little bit longer range. And your pilum was kind of your intermediate range weapon. Now, that's why I was debating... Because not all of this is super analogous. But maybe perhaps that is the AR-15. Because the AR-15 is a CQB weapon. Much like the Gladius. But it's the one weapon that a soldier, a marine has. And it's also effective at range. The M4 the army has. Effective out to 300 meters. The M16A4 that the marines now have. Effective to 550 meters. So perhaps that is more analogous to the Pelum. But what got this thing started was I was trying to think, for one of the patrons, they were doing an article and thinking about naming something based on the Romans, and it was the scout rifle. And I think the scout rifle is most analogous to the Pelum. It's supposed to be that kind of do multiple things gun, the Swiss army knife of guns, if you will. It does a little bit of range work, it does a little bit of in-close work, so... Perhaps that is the answer for the Pelum, or Pelum. Now, perhaps an easier analogy to today would be the Arkham, the bow, or Arcus, depending. I was very blessed to study Latin in school, but it's it's been a while. I'm a little rusty, and but let's say Arkham. The archer, the bow, use of the bow, it was a longer range weapon. I guess the, unless you get into big cruiser of weapons... The longest range range weapon an individual fired, I believe, at that time was the bow, the archer. That today, that will be your designated marksman and sniper role, right? We still have those today. Your designated marksman role, your M21, your M14, accurized, something with an optic, your designated marksman rifle in the Marines, or perhaps even your sniper, your M24, your M21. You're dragging off if you're doing the AK analogy, but they're still in use today. They're still a valid role for that, right? Also, your medium machine guns, if you're talking about how you employed the bow. If you employed the bow, the archers, as a kind of a volley fire, which was done quite often, then you're talking about, you know, a medium machine gun. Being down mass fire at a range greater than your average infantry men is capable of. You're talking about your classic M60 or today your 240 Golf or 240 Bravo depending on your branch of service but your 308 caliber medium machine gun roll. If you're talking about one man reaching out and touching a little bit farther then like we talked about you're talking about your designated marksman and your sniper roll. But we still see that in use today. Now transitioning to what I think is the easiest and best analogy The most analogous thing from Roman times to modern times. The Pugio. Now if you don't know the Pugio, or Pugio, if I want to say it like an Italian, or I guess an ancient Roman. Who knows how the ancient Romans actually pronounce stuff, right? We know that language changes over time. Pugio, or Pugio, if you're going to pronounce it the way that it's spelled. This is the Roman dagger, perhaps not as famous as the Roman short sword, 
but very useful. Romans, I think, quickly saw the utility of this and adopted it. I don't know if every Roman soldier had one like a gladius, but it was certainly common and certainly useful for a lot of reasons. And this is the best analogy today because just like the thing it's used for today, it's both used for concealability by people not in uniform. You see that in use in the Roman Empire, I do believe, and you see it for the main standing army as a backup weapon. The gladius breaks or is lost or smashed or bent or taken by an opponent or is pinned against. If you do any kind of up-close CQB fighting, you know that that happens. A weapon can get pinned up close to you. Having a backup weapon, small, handy, nice, in tight, get off me weapon, or a make space weapon to get to my primary weapon. The Pugio, the Roman dagger. It is a beautiful double-edged dagger design that we see coming up again and again in history. You look at the Roman uh, Pugio and you look at uh, Fairbairn Sykes, you know, British Commando knife of World War II, or you look at a Fairbairn Applegate knife of today, it's still a predominant fighting knife design, and it has been for thousands of years. That has to tell you something. The Egyptians had something very, very similar that goes back even earlier. Whether the Romans, whether that was a straight linear thing and was used continuously until the Roman times, or the Romans rediscovered that through the Iberian Peninsula or other places, that's its own argument, but where the roots of that are doesn't really matter. The Romans used the Pugio. They used it quite a bit. And we see it used by Roman soldiers in the military. And you see it used outside the military. The great thing about the Pugio is it's small and concealable and light and handy. So the obvious and easy linear path between that and today is the handgun. The concealed carry, the CCW. The Pugio, the CCW of the day. Up close, in tight, personal defense weapon of the every man and of the soldier. Just like then, today, soldiers, it's not uncommon to see a soldier with their main arm, AR-15, and a backup weapon, a handgun. Right? We, we see that. We see that in the Roman Empire, and we see that now. For similar reasons, something happens to the main arm, AR-15 has a malfunction. It goes down. It runs dry. You're out of ammo. Gets pinned up against your body. You're crawling in a tunnel. Now, then the handgun comes out. It's the backup to that, much like the Roman Pugio. Or we see it carried by civilians, used by civilians, concealed, walking around the streets of the city, or for defense in the countryside or whatever. That today is a CCW. It's a concealed carry handgun, right? That's pretty easy analogy to today it's the most analogous of all of these it's an easy thing to be what's the Pugio of today it's a handgun it's a ccw handgun it's the most analogous to today why does this really matter all this talk and banter about this yeah it's really cool to think about especially if you like history and one i'll be honest i'm doing this because i hope to expand the audience some people might see the title would listen to this that normally wouldn't that are history buffs that like Roman history and Roman weapons. Maybe they'll listen to this, broaden the audience. Not going to apologize for that. But the bigger thing here is, I think you see these concepts as being timeless. Now, the weapons themselves have changed quite a bit. There's quite a big difference between a Gladius and an AR-15, right? But the roles, the roles that they fill are similar. You have long-range weapons. You have your main infantry armament your main infantry arm of the day, whatever that might be for military, for law enforcement, AR-15s, Remington 870s, whatever. If you're longer range volley fire weapons, your medium machine guns, you have your longer range, more precision weapons, your archers, your snipers, your designated marksmen, have your intermediate kind of battle weapons, your pilum. Anyway, some of these concepts are timeless. And I encourage you to consider your role as a man and as an alpha male. I hope you have the right to be armed and defend yourself and carry a Pugio. Right? Whether that's a handgun, hopefully you're allowed to do that. Some other places, maybe the best you can do is a knife. But just like Romans saw the 
usefulness of it. I hope that you do as well. I think timeless throughout history is a man's ability to use and master a weapon, whatever that weapon might be, is useful and respected. So I hope that you ponder that. That's kind of my deeper hope for this episode. Anyway, with that, I guess I'll tie it into this episode. A fun little piece of Melito history. If you don't know, that's my last name, Melito, M-I-L-I-T-O. That is my name. That is Latin. It is the Latin word for soldier, by God's grace. Very fitting for my background. Melito, the Latin word for soldier. You can look that up and verify it. That is my name. That is what it means. Root word for where we get the word military, militia, militant. Melito. It's my last name. I often wonder if any of my ancestors were in Jerusalem around 33 Anno Domini. Which is going to bring us to the tactical verse of the day. This is Mark chapter 15. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the son of God. A Roman centurion, a Gentile, even he recognized the beauty and might of our Savior Jesus Christ. And if a Roman soldier who was a party to the crucifixion of Christ can recognize truly this man was the Son of God, then I submit to you, you had better recognize this man is the Son of God. Jesus is the Christ, the Savior. There's salvation in no other. Constant. One thing that remains constant every day since that day and those Roman soldiers to today from the beginning to the end, from the first day to the very last day is that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God. He changes not. In Him and Him only does your salvation lie. With that, thanks for listening and have a blessed day.